Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Hollywood After Dark. Today, of course, is the 2nd of March, 2022. What a day it has been. Everyone's talking about the Batman, the amazing, wonderful Batman. But if you're not paying attention, you might be noticing how one of your favorite directors, one of my favorite directors, Zack Snyder, kind of getting a shaft. We're talking about the Oscar situation. Talking about Bullet Train, Momoa joining the Fast and Furious franchise, and maybe, I don't know, a little controversy on Twitter. (laughs) Either way, folks, it's Hollywood After Dark. Let's fucking go. Hey, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing? Welcome to the party. Let me just make sure to get this image off the screen because I totally spaced on doing that. Uh, But welcome to the show. Welcome to Hollywood After Dark. It is, of course, the 2nd of March, 2022. We're getting closer and closer to my 40th birthday. I'm starting to feel it. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, the days are just kind of getting darker and bleaker. And oh, my God, my vision is starting to go crazy and more gray hair is popping up. Oh, no, that's because I spend too much time on the fucking Internet. That's that's actually the reason why it's not getting older. It's just not spending my time wisely. But of course, if you come here and you listen to me every night, you know that I say dumb shit. We're going to be talking about something here in a minute, uh, addressing some dumb shit. But uh, it needs to be addressed, obviously. And it's going to be interesting. And uh, I want to hear your guys' take on it. I want to I want to have this be a conversation. Uh, clearly, Twitter has their own opinions. We'll see if they show up tonight. The, the, the invitation has been extended. We will find that out here as time goes on. But again, I'm not too sure. Because uh, you know what? A lot of this stuff tends to stay on Twitter. And I'd like to remind people that Twitter is not real life. Just want to point that out. But you know what is real life? Patio commentary. That's right, folks. If you want to hear about how movies came together and then my thoughts on them, going deep dive into the story, my thoughts about scenes and actors and characters and writing and the score and everything else, you're going to want to check it out. YouTube.com forward slash patio commentary. Also, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Google Podcasts, Stitcher, anywhere you get your podcasts, Patio Commentary is there to fill your ears with the smoothing sounds of my melodic voice. That's right, folks. Check it out. Patio Commentary on YouTube. Also, this week's episode is going to be all about the Batman. This is not the final graphic, but it is going to be all about the Batman because this movie is amazing. It's dope. It's great. We all love it. And it's something You should see this weekend 100% to own the haters. If nothing else, go watch this movie to own the haters, get its box office as high as humanly possible. Ashley, you'll love the movie. You're going to come back and go, God damn it, Matt. I went in there with an agenda. I went in there to troll some people, but I fell in love. I fell in love with one of the most motivating movies of the year. One of the most inspirational and uplifting films I've ever seen from a comic book movie in The Batman, the dark (laughs) noir film. Anyway, check it out. I'll be coming later on this week. And if you also like what I do here, you support what I do here, probably the best way to do that is through patreon.com forward slash Matt Jarbo. Super chats and channel memberships are greatly appreciated. Uh, YouTube takes that 30% to not give YouTube your money, which there's something, if you happen to be a fan of TikTok, now might be the time to look into that. And I'll say this though, real quick. TikTok has announced that they're going to start doing 10 minute long videos. Don't know how well it's going to work, but 10 minute long videos in a way to rival YouTube, and then just magically, magically, all of these attorney generals in different states have now decided to do an inquiry into TikTok. Now, there's the stuff that we're talking about, obviously, but uh, we'll follow the story more as time goes on. I think it might be Google. I'm just going to put on my tinfoil hat for that one, but it's entirely possible that they use their lobbying power to get this kind of stuff done. I don't know if that's true or not, but remember, Google sometimes is the enemy. They said their, their motto is do no evil. Or maybe, but that that went away a long time ago. But that being said, welcome to the show. Enough of my shilling. Enough of my shilling on this one to talk to you guys. Uh, We're going to be bringing in uh, my friend, your friend. You all know what's going on. You all know her. You love her. You might hate her. I don't know. I talk to her almost every day. Good, bad, or the other. Uh, Saggy Melons, what's going on? What up? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And shit. Yeah. 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 (laughs) It's like... Like, what up? Like, you, like, you high? Yeah, hi. Hello. Hello, Hello. my name is Saggy Mallard. You should be. I think you should probably be high. Um, yeah. I being should be your high. friend, yeah. Being your yeah. friend, yeah. I need to be high all the I time. I am not I am not that bad. 
No, you're not that bad. You're just, I'm not that bad. You just, you know, piss people off. <laughs> I, yes. I Am I a thorn in the side for certain people? Yes. yes. My God, Yes, I are. am. Yes, I am. Uh, and do those people look for any, any and all opportunities to kind of cancel me? Yes, yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah they do. Uh, not a week goes by where I don't anger the Snyder Cut fandom in one way or another. But I will admit today I probably went a little bit too far. Uh, you uh, think? I can, I, I can, well, I can acknowledge that. I can oh. acknowledge. And I acknowledged it initially. But uh, people out there really bad, big mad at me, right? Super yeah. mad at that me. Was, mm-hmm. um, like, it's so interesting. Uh, I woke up this morning to a bunch of uh, DMs on Twitter and people are and like I don't know what was going on because the person who I guess they were that they were quoting had blocked me. So I had like I was on my phone. I'm like, I have no idea what's happening. And uh, and as I woke up and I took my kid to school, I realized that a lot of people are mad at me because of a comment I made on a stream from a couple nights ago when RJ and I were talking about uh about the Oscars, about the fan favorite mm-hmm. Oscar award and what would happen. If, if people in the Snyder cult, cause I'm calling, I'm just going to say it now cause fuck them. But people in the Snyder cult, we, you know, we're, we're sent out there. Right. And, uh, we made a joke about it. And then I, I took it a little bit too far with, uh, with the summarization of how I feel uh, about people like them in regards to, you know, what their motivating factors are with this, right. What their motivations are, uh, for how much they obsess over Zack Snyder, for how much they obsess over, Every little thing he does, live, eat, breathe, shit, Zack Snyder. That's all these people do. And uh, and I made a comment about wanting them, you know, them wanting to be adopted by Zack. And I said, so I invoked Autumn's name. It was a poor choice of words. It was very stupid of me to do. Very poor. P- very poor. And what then I immediately mean? took it back. And I just want to point out the context, right? I just want to point out the context. Yeah, but because, what are you thinking that? <laughs> well, the I, well, the idea there is pretty pretty basic, right? It's pretty basic here. Look, I'll play this clip. I'll play this clip. Oh boy. And uh, no, 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 I'll play the clip because no, we're going to provide context. Okay. If I'm going to talk about it, I'm going to provide the clip because a lot of people are mad at me. A lot of people are big mad at me. Yeah, this. very big mad. All right. So here here's the clip. True, but there is the possibility that exists, like Rishi said, that Geralt and Mercury will be flowed out to present the award. Next year, that would be hysterical to me. That would be that would be really hysterical if they're like, "All right, this random, this random ass troll is going to end up getting this thing." I would laugh my ass off with that. <laughs> Introducing Twitter username Geralt of Snyderverse. <laughs> Just imagine, like I I imagine both Geralt and Mercury looking like the the guy from the from the South Park episode, "Make Love Not Warcraft." You know, oh my God! The guy is just sitting there balding. He's just got Cheeto they're dust kids, everywhere. Though. Apparently, like they're like some teenagers, man. It's what we, uh, they're teenagers. I like just, I don't believe that for a second. You, no, no, so no. One of them is, by the way. They're younger than me, apparently. That's what I, I've been told. Please, that, please. I swear, I swear, man. If that is told. true, then they both have like severe amounts of daddy issues. You know, but then again, that whole side of the Snyder fandom, I think, really are at this point. Like, they all are so desperate to have Zaddy adopt them that that's what they want. They want Zaddy to to call them up and go, "I choose you," like they're fucking Pokemon. That's what they want because so they, they want to no- be the new starters. They want to replace the chat. Yeah, actually, that yeah, they they want to be the new Autumn. Oh, just- <laughs> now, now I no. said that. I said that. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. But oh. my point. But my point, though, was not referring to suicide. I know. My point but... was not referring to suicide, and many people out there have thought that I was making a suicide joke. I wasn't making a suicide joke. Uh... But there's again, there's a parasocial relationship here that happens between a lot of people. Now, but again, there's some there's so what what there's a little bit more here in regards to what people were sharing. Right, it goes on a little further. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't Poor mean RJ. that. Okay, so so right there, right, I laugh. Okay, I laughed, and that's where they cut it off. Right, that's yeah. where they cut it. But yeah. I don't even finish the laugh before I go into the next thing. Right, where I say this. I don't mean I, that. I don't mean I don't. that. I don't mean that. I don't mean that. That's a poor joke in poor taste, and I apologize. So immediately catch it. Say I'm sorry. It was in poor taste. It was dumb. 
that last couple seconds was omitted from what people were sharing around today. So the context of me, or at least me owning up to go, oh, I was a dumb joke and whatever in that moment in time, which is, you know, th- th- those last couple seconds mysteriously gone, mysteriously removed from the entire scenario. Of course. And so all these people today have been dragging me over it. So I, I, you know, I found the clip, put it out this morning and whatever, and people still refuse to acknowledge exactly uh, what, ex- what it is I'm talking about. And, and that's the whole point. I mean, I, I, like I said, I, I, so I didn't hear the whole clip. I was confused because I just woke up and I had DMs too. So I didn't know what was going on. And I was just like, oh, Matt pissed people off again. And then I kind of heard that, like you mentioned the name and I was like, oh, Matt, what are you doing? So I didn't fully re- like watch the clip. And I was saying, you know, I made a tweet and I also got a little backlash for that. And that's understandable, but I did a stream earlier and kind of, you know, explain myself more, but like, yeah, I, at that point, no matter what you say, like I even said, like, even if Matt apologized, right, which he did, right, they don't care. So, I mean, I understand. I mean, yeah, I, I think that at this point, like, I'm just going to say it, like, no, just nobody should be saying that name. No one should be mentioning Zach's kid or children at all. That should be like, I went after Mecca random for that, but she said much worse. But, uh, I, you know, I think at that point, like, you know, I understand you kind of realize your her ways i'm like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna disavow and, and disown you for well that, i but i disavowed my own statement there and even people in the chat gave me a little bit of shit over it but then again a lot of people who are sharing this around uh they don't ever you, listen listen to my show they, right. they don't ever listen to me talk they don't ever listen to the stupid shit that i say i mean like in in that clip immediately following that there was uh, a comment from Benson about me presenting at the Oscars with a transgender porn star named Bailey J. And I'm like, only if I can take the envelope off of her dick. Cause that's primetime television right there. I mean, it's an absurd hyperbolic statement to make. And the intent is to be funny. Right. But like, we're talking about a tragic, st- a tragic. We story. are, we are. What, but what and I'm I referring to, what, what I, to. what, yeah, what I was referring to was the parasocial relationship between these people and Zack Snyder, Snyder, who will never know their name, Snyder, who will never truly acknowledge their existence, mm-hmm. that they will, that they will battle to the death for. That's what right. I was referring to. No, and, and I get they, that. And that's what like, it was. And I stand by my statement. I right, stand by my point. You could have, but I should have framed there. it differently. Yeah, I well, should no, have framed it differently. There. No, you didn't have to frame it differently. You could have just stopped at that last part. And sure. Not I think what it was part. is like is like when I made the comment about Pokemon, and then RJ's like RJ said replacement. I like my you know I was like thinking of it like in a very it was a very dumb connection. Right. Like it wasn't it meant to be, like, it wasn't like a scripted bad. event. It wasn't like I had, I had this like massive dig figured out or nothing like that. It was, you know, I'm not sitting here like scrolling down like terrible jokes before the show. Everything we do here is, is, is completely unscripted, which allows for the occasional flub to happen. Uh, but that's really what it boils down to. All yeah, right. Like, like I, I caught it and I was like, no, that's not real. Right. That's not me. And then people out there didn't want to acknowledge that. Right. However, I do have to address a couple elements of this because I have gotten threats today. I had one guy, one guy want to fight me in real life. Want me want to want to set up a fight. I'm assuming in California, which is where he's from. Um, you know, uh, it doesn't look like, look like he ever travels out of state. You know, the kind of guy who looks like he unironically listens to Kid Rock. But oh, it's, God. it's like, he wants to fight me. You know, he wants to fight me. He's like, he's like, you, you know, all this shit. I'm like, dude, like, you don't even know what the, fu- you don't even know what you're talking about. He already didn't like me anyway. And there's a lot of people in the Snyder fandom that don't like me right. because, uh, because I've been telling them for a year now it's over. It's not going anywhere. Guess what guys? Hey, I've been proven right up until this point. And they're mad at me. Cause I always call them on their bullshit. I'm probably one of the only people who can, who continuously, despite me not wanting to, call out a lot of the Snyder cult on their bullshit because it's, it's a continuous aspect of just of lies and deceit and, and people who, who believe that shit's going to continue. Never mind everything else saying it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And so, you know what? I took a cheap shot and it was a cheap shot and I admit that. And that's, that's my fault. But I I do want to say though, like, again, there's one person who I will not name who wanted me to apologize to them directly. And, and nothing I said had anything to do with this person. Nothing I said had anything to do with this individual. I don't know this individual. 
I am sorry you were offended at, at a dumb joke that I made, but it's, uh, but again, bad. I'm not a bad, fine, bad joke, dumb take, whatever, whatever, whatever terminology you want to use. That's fine. And I accept that because it was a stupid thing to say, but I don't know you and I never, nothing was framed at you. And so if you feel personally aggrieved by something, I don't know, I can't, like, I'm not going to apologize because he wanted me to apologize to him directly. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to, that is, that is, that is narcissism. And that is emotional abuse aimed at me. You're trying to get me to acknowledge something that I didn't do, you know, to, to like, if you feel offended, that's on you. But like to have me apologize to you directly, I think is ridiculous. I don't know. I don't like this kind of emotional things. This is what I don't like. I don't I like, like you, yeah, you will. Yeah. But there's reasons for that though. <laughs> that's true. We won't go into those reasons because it's personal, yes. Um, you know, but it's like. You know, there's that like, but that's the way I view it is like, you know, if, if you want me, if you want to be mad at me, at least, at least get me on like the co full context. Uh, I, a lot of people out there only looked at like just that little bit. And I'll tell you this, that clip got shorter and shorter and shorter as it got shared around. Right. It got <laughs> yeah. shorter and shorter and shorter as, as I started getting tagged in a bunch of stuff. And I just noticed the context going away and going away and going away and going away. And, and I was just sitting there like laughing all day at this thing. Cause I'm like, you guys are mad at me for, for a dumb comment, which is fine. Be mad all you want. But it's like the people who were really pushing this, like one of them has run, in my opinion, a fraudulent GoFundMe in order yeah. to bilk money out of, out of Snyder cut fans. That's true. Yeah. And then the other one, uh, used man of steel to meme on nine 11 on its 20th anniversary. And got clapped back on real hard, never apologized. Right. And it's I'm, like, so there's, so there, if you want to talk about, you know, content of character here, sure. I'm a dick. All right. I'm an asshole. I, I can acknowledge that fact, but if I'm wrong, I'll acknowledge that I'm wrong and I'll apologize. Yeah. You know I what? Backlash with that too. With my stream, I had people apparently in a discord, po you know, posting they're probably here too. And I'm just like, they're like, well, you're defending as like, I'm not defending. They're like, well, calling out what these people did. I'm like, I understand that. But at the same time, like it is overall hypocrisy. Like, I'm sorry that people misunderstand that, but there is a level of hypocrisy where people like to nitpick and choose when that, when it's okay to be offended by something somebody said and when it's not okay. It's just, just because you like somebody doesn't mean you can sit there and not be offended. Like, I, 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 when I heard what happened, I was like, damn, man. She was pissed. She was pissed. She was pissed. Yeah. She was pissed. yeah. I, I yeah. called him and was like, what the, I was like, you, what are you doing? <laughs> like I called him and the people sit there like, oh, you defended man. I'm like, no, no, see, there's a difference. I called him cause I have his number and I called him and I was just like, bro, what, what were you thinking? Like, what, what are you doing? You're like now. And oh no, it was dumb. Him. Yeah. It was I dumb. And I acknowledge that. I, I acknowledge that. And like, I've told people. Who's defending? What, again, no, one, no one no one no one has defended it. it like no one has defended it or like, whatnot everyone and, is literally giving him that shit today for it but like i said oh, there's yeah. a difference between giving him shit and like hey like you shouldn't but have said something. a lot of the people giving me shit have also been looking for reasons to give me shit you know like i'm not mocking people who have committed suicide i'm not mocking people who have attempted to commit suicide and have been survivors of that uh right look here, I, a couple a couple of years ago i you know 2017 2018 man like when the adpocalypse happened on YouTube, I had just bought a house, uh, found out my girlfriend was pregnant. She was leaving her, her job where they paid her like 70 grand a year. My earnings uh, were cut in half. And now I'm basically the sole proprietor, right? Sole breadwinner for this, for this new endeavor <coughs> that like I was completely out of my comfort zone and I had moved to, you know, to another state and establish trying to establish myself there. And I, I was feeling it constantly. Part of my downfall in 2018 was that constant uh, sense of just like, you know, that depression feeling from like, I would, I live by a lake and I would drive by the lake and I would look at the lake and I'd go like, man, what if I just drove my car in there? You know, like, would it matter? Would anyone care? And that was thoughts every single day. Now I never did it. And I've been on antidepressants for a while, thankfully. Uh, and I sought counseling in 2018 and to help out with a lot of the stuff to help me kind of cope with things. So it's not that I'm being minimal of suicide. I'm not being minimal at all. What, what happened with Autumn Snyder is absolutely tragic. There's no other word for it. What I was referring to, and again, just for clarity's sake, was not invoking her situation, the tragedy, 
it was people that are trying to fill like that are using the parasocial relationships as a way to almost justify their obsession and to justify their actions and their antics. And, and these are people who like unironically will call themselves Snyder sexuals and they go, oh, I love zaddy and things along those lines. That's what I'm talking about, where it's clear delusion and, and these, and these, you know, very, very ill people, in my opinion, that I probably shouldn't mock the way that I do. And I'm going to keep it cool for a while after this, just because like, I'll back off because there's really no point anymore. But I really feel that like, and I'm in tr Well, a lot of them have blocked me anyway, so I didn't see it. Uh, but, but a lot of people still DM me a lot of shit. Oh my God. Yeah. I get DM so been much bad. shit. I've even had to block people today. Cause I was like, <laughs> I can't today, dude. But that's the yeah. thing. It's like, it's like, I've, I told a story about how, like, I, I, first of all, I know y'all don't watch my channel, but I'll just repeat it here. Like I would be a hypocrite if I was to go in on someone who said something stupid. Cause I used to be that kind of insensitive person where I'd say some messed up stuff and not think twice of it and then realize I was hurting people, you know? And uh, if I was to just be like, Oh man, I can't talk to you anymore. It's like, dude, like I'd be a hypocrite. Cause you know how many people forgave me for the stuff I've said, you know? Like if I, if I, if I literally got, got held, uh, if people weren't able to forgive me for the stupid shit I've said in my past, I'd have no friends, you know? So that's just what it is. So I, 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 I'm trying to be like more understanding. Cause like we are all flawed and we all say things that in the heat of the moment, we don't think about till after the fact, like I've had like Snyder people tell me to kill myself. And they mean now, that now you saw people today telling that to me, right? Right. Yeah, I did. Okay, because I, I, that. yeah, I don't read like, uh, I was laughing because there's like 68 quote tweets. I'm like, fuck you. I'm not going to, I'm blocked by most people anyway. So I can't read it anyway. But like, I was like, whatever. So yeah, you're telling me all that. And it's like, again, I make a joke not about suicide. They overreact, tell me to kill myself. People threatening to fight me, people, people DMing me, telling me I need to find God before I find them. Oh, you know, pause. like Dalton and Hamad, <laughs> even if he apologized, would you accept it? I highly doubt it. So what does no, it matter? Dalton, Dalton is me, Dalton is trolling. I know Dalton is trolling, I think. Well, uh, I'm just the whole saying, scripted like, people, apology. People asking for apologies, like he did apologize, no one accepted it. That is that is your right. Forgiveness is for you, not for Matt. It's for you. It's for you to let go of your anger and your animosity. So if you want, no, if you're not going to accept his apology, stop asking for one because you're not going to accept it. Because the fact that you are here and you are also in my chat, you don't want an apology. You just want to, you want, you want us canceled. You want us silenced. Just admit it. Just how about this? When you admit that you want us canceled and you want us to shut our fucking mouths, then I will say, yeah, we'll give you an apology. But until you admit you want us to shut up and go away, you ain't getting shit. I look, man, I, I don't, you know, people, they like me. They don't like me. It is what it is. Uh, I'm telling you, Hamad, I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't, I've never seen you on my channel before. I think I've seen your your twitter account my bad dalton I, love you i don't think you fucking know me i don't think you know my opinion on stuff or how i talk about stuff or how i approach it on this show that's the whole thing my audience who comes here they gave me a little bit of shit and then they immediately heard me say i'm sorry i was wrong and they're like, all right and they backed off all right because my audience will call me out if you get an out of context clip on twitter and i provide you with the context and and you can see that what was shown immediately, willfully omitted me going like, yeah, that was dumb. Doesn't that come across as emotional manipulation on their end in order See? to frame me in the worst light possible without, without providing the commentary? That's what I'm talking about. I Look, I admit it was a dumb thing to say, but it's it, that's it. That's it. You know, and people are upset. Like, you know, no, CGH, it's not... I understand people suffer through depression. I want people who suffer with the, I think mental health is probably the largest issue facing our society. I, I really do. It I is. think that mental health services should be 100% free taxpayer subsidies, everything. All yeah. right. Like you should get, um, you know, uh, antidepressants, uh, covered by the state. You should get Smoke counseling covered by the state. You know what? 
I mean, like even fucking weed, give weed out to people like by the state, have, have the government give out pot. Yeah. All that shit to calm me down. I support all that. You know what I mean? And uh, and this is what I'm saying too, Jarba. Like people don't remember that people would say messed up things about people with mental health issues and tell them to commit suicide because it was edgy. And it was, it it, was, because back in the day, mental health was treated like, like uh, there was a stigma around it. Like no one wanted to admit anyone had mental health issues. No one ever wanted to admit that kids, you know, young people were committing suicide. Nobody wanted to admit that. Now we're more aware. Now we're more exactly my point. You guys don't want an apology. Nah, so well, this person, look, if it's if this person is a person that runs that Twitter account, dude, you need to touch grass, homie. Like you need to touch grass, touch pussy, touch dick, whatever it is you gotta touch. Touch that shit. You are obsessed. You are obsessed. I don't care if you say it's too late for an apology. Did I say anything to you specifically? No. So it's like, what do you want? Like, you want me to bend down one knee and like kiss your feet and, and praise praise to Zaddy? I mean, fuck off, dude. Like, like what I say, don't like what I say. I, it doesn't matter. Uh, and nobody yeah. liked what he said, bro. Even his friends gave him shit for it. And y'all were in my chat saying I was defending him. Like, I called this motherfucker right after work. I called him and was like, what are you doing? What? Why? And and, yeah. and I was mad. He told you I was pissed. So again, but I'm again, I'm not going to sit here and disavow and shun him. He made a mistake. He admitted to it. He felt genuinely bad. What what more do you want? You want him to pay what? You want him to give you money? Because I don't think that's going to happen. Listen, I'll buy you bubble tea. We'll talk about it and you can have yourself a good time. All right. Relax. (laughs) Like shit. It happens, guys. People say stupid shit all the time. I say if you listen to the show, you guys here, you guys here are here. I hear a lot. How much dumb, stupid shit do I say for shock value? All the fucking time. You make me cringe every single time I'm here. Every time. Every time. Every time I say something that is that is shocky. And that's and that's meant to get a reaction out of the audience. But you didn't but go my, too far that one time. I, I, but and I admit that I admitted that to you on the phone earlier. Yeah. I even I even called the Enosh after we spoke, and I got his voicemail. But I left him a quick message because I figured it was going to be brought up over there, you know. Um, uh, and I I didn't want him to like think that like he you know be bombarded with it or whatever. Um, bro, you know, bro, so you th- hold on. I'm sorry to keep cutting across you because this dude is too funny for me, bro. You literally just said it's too late for an apology, but now you want a written apology. Like, make up your goddamn mind. See, this is the bullshit I'm talking about. <laughs> you don't care. You literally don't care if he already said sorry or not, or even if he wrote an apology. You already stated you don't care. None of you do. Like a lot of these people, you don't care. You just want him to shut up and go away. But guess what? Again. What did I tell you when you came to my stream and did this bullshit? You are coming to a monetized channel, helping the engagement, and I've told you this is a stupid thing to do. And he's a much bigger channel than I am. So imagine it, how much money you're going to be giving him because of this, because you're bringing this drama here. People it doesn't drama. Well, it, it, the, the biggest idea of it, though, and, and then after that, I'll, I don't want to spend all night on it because it's like I'm, you know, I've it's been going on all day. Uh, look, like me, don't like me. I don't really like care i I mean i prefer i prefer you like me because i'm not i'm not the boogeyman people make me out to be i'm not the villain people make me out to shut up yes (laughs) shut up (laughs) just because i poisoned your bubble tea that one time Mm -hmm. uh you know but uh but the whole idea here is that like people there's a lot of people out there who are so emotionally invested with this whole thing that they don't realize how absolutely utterly toxic they are how much of an echo chamber they are in, how much of a feedback loop they are in, how much of a cult they are in, where anyone out there who starts to go, I don't know if this is ever going to happen or blah, 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 blah. They're treated as if they're others. They're ostracized from their friend groups because of the way certain people act and certain people uh, you, you know, are on Twitter. And you see this by the constant validation that certain people seek. You know, do you love Zack Snyder? Comment for yes. Retweet for yes. Heart for yes. It's it's a feedback loop. It's very much meant to activate the dopamine levels that one might get from getting responses on the internet. That's the whole point of it all. People who live vicariously through a man that they're never going to meet, that they're never going to interact with, who has been able to use that fan base to get a $70 million blank check, basically, to finish up his movie, 
to put it out there. And as I keep saying about this, if you look at how they're now going to, with HBO Max, start to scale back the amount of money invested once Zaslav takes over, they're not going to continue with something that's as expensive as Zack Snyder's movies. That's just the, the cast cost alone is going to put that budget over $200 million. They're not going to do it. That is the reality. This is a business. This is a show business, not show friends, show business. And people can believe whatever they want to believe. And we're actually going to talk a little bit about that uh, towards the end of the stream about the fan favorite stuff. And there's a quote that a line that, um, that Hollywood reporter uses, or variety uses that I think is, is being again, um, not necessarily accurate because of data. But then again, we'll talk about that. Yay. Um, you know, Oh, Hey, I'm not backtracking. What did I backtrack on? I gave my opinion. You can listen, you can listen to my context or you cannot, or you I'm can go back <laughs> and hope to God that one day you'll, you'll be, you'll be t touched on the shoulder by Zach. You'll, you'll get the hand of your God on your shoulder, dude. All right. People like you, Ryan, again, if that's the real account, I've seen your account, you live and you breathe this shit. You live and you breathe this stuff. That's it. So you have to ask yourself, like, is it all worth it? At the end of the day, is it all worth it? And that's for you. Ugh. So all I'm going to say, if y'all going to try to cancel us, you better try motherfucking harder. Cause bitches dude, like fucking, I will say this better motherfuckers have tried pretty much like I'm that's pretty much what I'm feeling like go have a blast if that makes y'all sleep well at night trying to cancel people who, who make mistakes and admit to them um then knock yourselves the fuck out because y'all try to cancel me over some dumb shit too and it's just it's old it's old and tiresome but you guys gotta try a little harder dig dig deeper into my past well, why don't you make yourselves look even cooler by my going shit, back three or four years to find my shit's shit. already out there from like a decade ago my shit's out there and people still try to bring it up as if it's recent shit right well yeah, and again, look at said this again. it's like bro, yeah like, like i said it i said it like a decade ago like again like that's not who i am as a person clearly and even then i was it was a lot of it because i was on 4chan a lot at the time no and one cares, so, Ryan. No one cares. The, your fandom is not our fandom. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> the fandom God, is united against you. What right, does that even like, mean? Right, you're literally admitting that you're trying to fucking cancel people. Like, grow the fuck up. Grow the fuck up. It's you. It's the internet. It's not a real fucking place, bro. It's so it's so annoying. That's why I call you people out and bait you. Because y'all are just too fucking simple SJWs. I know I used to be one. And y'all do the same bullshit tactics that typical SJWs use. And guess what? If you think that you're going to do SJW tactics and do cancel culture on people, the world, the internet world doesn't like cancel culture or SJWs. So we already won. But keep trying. You're going to find it very cold and lonely like I did. <laughs> <laughs> fucking a, man. anyway well i love this here idea do cinema ibs on three buck theater invite snyder clowns to debate you and your fans these soy jack betas got their got money for funko pops they'll super bury that out of hate here's the thing with that though dude they won't do it like they literally won't do it like i've, I've done invited this. all of them i said y'all want to squash this well you want to squash this let's squash it they and it's happened do it. it's happened on twitter even one of the guys this guy named mercury who fucking hates me he came on a, a space and he kept having like mic problems with his phone. Like it's like every time, every time, you know, a lot of these people, they never actually want to engage. They never actually want to want to hash it out. They just want to bitch from a keyboard because it's safe for them. It's oh, safe. It's, well, you know what it, why it is, is because when you when you're typing out what you want to say, you have more time to think about what you want to say to make it clever. But you get in voice. You can't gather your thoughts fast enough to, to have a good comeback. But like I said, we're not out here trying to cancel you guys. I never once wanted to try to cancel the fandom. I just want no, I want I want more. I right. want more. I man, like I was watching the Batman last night. Love the Batman. And I was thinking, man, it'd be really cool to see like Affleck continue in some capacity. But again, it's like Affleck doesn't want to do it. And uh, once like I think once Gal is done with with her current contract agreement doing Wonder Woman three, that's probably it for her. Uh, Momoa might do a couple more appearances, but that, I think, and I honestly don't think we're going to get another Flash movie. I think this is going to be it for Ezra Miller. Why? Because no one likes Ezra Miller. I like 
Ezra. I'll say that. Well, I'll say this. James Gunn made Ezra Miller likable with that one line of dialogue. He did. He yeah, did. He but went. I out. like Ezra Miller's. Even I though don't. I don't like the way he runs, I just I like him as a Flash. <laughs> Yeah, he uh, me. I don't know, man. I think he works as a side character, not as a main character. But that's yeah, why they're man. giving us another. That's why they're giving us like two Batman in that movie and I Supergirl. Mean, the Flash might change minds. Maybe Andy Maybe. Muschietti. I have faith in Andy Muschietti, but I'm not too. I'm not too. I don't know. I don't know here. Uh, but thank you for that one. Hondo H Bart's here says last super chat for a while, but give Rebo back Saggy. No, H Bart, you we had an agreement. You have not fulfilled said agreement, so you're not getting him back. He's gone. I have him. He's still alive. I'll at least tell you that. I just told you he's dead. He's not dead. But you're not getting him back until our arrangement is made. So <laughs> all no. right. Well, you guys need to sort that shit out. Uh Hondo here. I did see this one earlier, man. Thank you. Says that means cinema stands are actively watching Three Buck Theater. Uh I, I'll tell you this. I really wish cinema stands were watching. Uh as much as I do think that the Snyder Cut was cinema, I think it was great cinema. And I like Zach. Stand? Cinema stands are like movie buffs, oh. right? It's like, you know, Stan, you know, Stan and... culture. You should know Stan culture. You spend time on the internet. I thought that was like a YouTube channel name. No, 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 no. It's just, it's like, it's just movie files or cinephiles or whatever, you know, cinema and... stands type stuff. But they're kind of bitchy ones, really. I think that's I mean... what it is. I honestly, like, I love debating movies. Um, And so, you know, because I do my research on them and I pay attention to them and I actually, you know, uh, intricately like to watch them and understand them and break them down. I love to argue movies, but a lot of, you know, if they want a cinema stance, want to argue, we'd argue. Although Hondo here does it make another great point says you hate Zack Snyder. Fight me. IRL <laughs> beta male. Yeah. kind of. Nobody hates Zack. I actually, I'm looking forward to rebel moon. I'm like wicked excited for it. And I explained why it's like new. And I'm like, I'm looking forward to rebel moon. I think he's going to make a great, uh great pro. Uh, is it, it's a show, right? No, it's a movie. Oh, it's a movie. It's a movie. Yeah, it's a movie. It's, it's a, a two-parter. Movie. It's a two-parter. They're, they're oh, starting off with two-parters. I think it's going to end up being like a, a, a whole series of films. I think it's going to be, uh, I think Planet of the, I think Army of the Dead and Rebel Moon are going to be two franchises that they, that they sp- expand outward. You know, whether it's going to be because, you know, Army of the Dead has got the movie. It's got P- Army of Thieves. There's the, the animated show that's coming. And so, you know, plus Planet of the Dead is the, is the I think the title of the next one. So and like is that one gonna be a live action movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Netflix has already greenlit it, and then they're they're doing two. They're doing Rebel Moon Part One and Part Two. So they're doing two films. They're filming it from April to November of this year. I want him to do shows. Well, I mean, shows are you know who knows maybe he will. I think I think he'll be. I again, why would you ever just? I mean, this is just me as a as a as a as a creative entity in some capacity. If I was given the keys to like the kingdom and given blank checks to make make passion projects at a streaming service where they'll not only put them in limited theatrical runs, but they'll back it up and support it. Uh, why would you ever go back to another company? I would never go to another studio regardless because navigating the studio system is fucking terrible. It stifles creativity more often than not. Right. I, that's why I was like, bro, like nothing against, like, I would love to see Zach continue uh, more movies in the DCU, but the fact that they literally wanted to limit his creativity pisses me off. It's like, why would you hire somebody to do a movie for you? And then be like, you could do this movie, but you can't do this, 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 and this. It's like, but then what's the point? I'd rather him just do a movie and have creative freedom to do what he wants and make it how he wants to have good entertainment than them just sitting there and be like, yeah, no, we're going to cut the, oh, four hours. Nah, we can't do that. We need this to be two hours. Like, but bro, maybe some people want to see that additional two hours. Like maybe you could cut it down and then release a director's cut with the with the additional two hours. Like the way that they did it was just, in my opinion, just dog shit. Cause that movie, the justice league one that he did. Woo. Woo. Talk about a much better movie experience. Sure. You know, absolutely was. And if they ever, if, if Warner brothers was smart and they're not, and I'll say that uh, if they're going to put a three hour Batman movie in theaters, why not give me the four hour Snyder cut? You know, what's one more hour. It's one less screening per day, but right now is kind of the time, you know, right. theaters still aren't back yet and they still need to, but here's, here's the thing though. It was like, literally this is the other thing about the Snyder cut is the Snyder overall, the justice league uh, part, you know, uh, it's original production back in 2016, the reshoots in 2017, the the movie, the 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 cost of distribution and marketing in 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 late 2017, and and the the flop at the box office and everything else, 
And then also the Snyder Cut stuff. The movie, overall, the budget for everything was around $400 million. Mm-hmm. And the mo- that's, that is impossible to really turn a profit on. The whole point of putting it on HBO Max was for subscribers. That's it. You know, but it was know, very well received. It was very well received. It would be in their best interest, I think. That's what I was saying. To, to do a Fathom event. Do a Fathom event where it's like, you know, one night, here's the whole four hours. I think you would sell out. I, I dude, I saw an I I saw Batman and IMAX last night, 300 seat auditorium, literally packed. It was sold out. It was an uncomfortable three hours because those are not like the luxury seats. So I'm kind of like, and I was in between two, two big guys and I'm a, I'm a bare chested <laughs> motherfucker too. So I'm sitting there and I like to like cross my legs. Cause that's how I get comfortable. And it's very difficult to kind of like navigate my ass <laughs> in these seats as I'm trying to like figure this thing out. So for the, like for pretty much like two and a half hours, I kind of sat there and like, didn't move my body because there was no real comfortable place to kind of like stretch out. And everything else, which is right. why I like I like being at home. But still, it was a packed auditorium. It was it was uh, full of people, and and people clapped at the end of it, and people had a good time. So it's it's like they, just give us that in theaters. I think that would be absolutely fine. Right, three hours for the Batman, but they wouldn't let Zach do a four hour movie. Like what? I was when I yeah. saw that it was three hours. I'm like, <laughs> is DC is is DC and Warner Brothers? Are they just high? Yeah. What up, Jesse? When will the Snyder Cut of the show be released? I don't know, man. Probably, probably whatever. Uh, however, I will be doing another BTR on Friday if you want to come by. Because uh, even though I think you're a troll, I do enjoy our conversations. So. Yeah, but I'm the new co-host. We're not doing... Well, did you see... What I, you know, <laughs> well, there's stuff to talk about with Ralph Ashley today, but uh, I won't go into that here. That's not really the place for it. Uh, but anyway, 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 anyway. Uh, the CJH here with a $1 uh, sticker. Thank you very much. I appreciate Aww. that. I love this. Um, look, man, I know, I know we're not going to agree on the everything, but I hope you have some understanding about like where I'm coming from. So there's that. However, uh, you are a troll, but you're not trolling me. I know you have my heart, Jesse. What can I say? Oh um, my God. Get a room, both of you. <laughs> McLeod are asking, is there any mid or post credit scenes in the Batman? No, there are not. There are no um, after credit scenes. No, there's not. But I will say this though. Ooh. I will say this though. Uh, actually, I think it's in, I think it's actually one of the slides I've got coming up. So no, it's fine. But, uh, here, here's one thing I want to cover. You guys want something to be really mad about. Oh, all right. God. Like people who are mad at me, you want something to be really fucking mad about. Oh, no. you, you know what I'm going to show, you know what I'm going to show. <laughs> this is what you guys have got to be really mad at that. There were only a couple good people in this, in this movie. Ryan, uh, no. You had Bruce Wayne, Batman, and you had Alfred. Those are the only two good white people. Um, the rest of the really the three other major players that I would consider like overall like moral good people were, you know, you had Jim Gordon, who's black in this. You had Catwoman, who's not white in this. And then you had the mayor, who's a black woman. Again, very much on the nose for current day Hollywood. Did not like that. Took a <laughs> Ryan, no. I know. What the hell? Ryan, I like you, but no, baby, no. Why? Why, Ryan? I was you know? I was in my car uh when somebody sent me this and I was like, oh, what did he say now? And I clicked on it. And you know that <sighs> gif of like the guy just kind of blinking, right? Like that that one guy's like, okay, you know, that whole thing. That was me for like five minutes. I just sat uh, there like Yeah. Okay, I like sh- I've made some, I've said some dumb shit in my day, a hundred percent, as we were addressing earlier tonight. I've said a lot of dumb things in my day. I've never gone this far because I don't believe in any of that shit. Like Ryan is a true believer. Like you can look at him. He believes what he's saying here. He, this isn't a troll. This is him legitimately saying like, I do not like that. There is a black Jim Gordon. Never mind. Jeffrey Wright (sighs) nailed the role. You know, and then you know, having a, the black female candidate for mayor, uh, again, it's kind of like, well, yeah, as time, there's a reason why she was running. And if you look at the overall context of of Gotham as a whole in the movie, you you kind of can see why things would go this way. And yeah, it is kind of rem- representative of where we are now as a culture. And that frightens him, which is why he left California for fucking Florida, by the way. First of all. Florida is much cheaper, so I I do agree with the move. Number one, 
Uh, number two, I uh, yeah, I saw this and I was just like, Ryan, I, I want to get try to understand what you were trying to say, but the way you said it was just, I, I there's nothing I can say to even rationalize this one because I'm just like, oh, Ryan, what are you doing? You you were like the two white people and then you got all the colored people and I'm just like, Ryan, what are you what are you doing? Stop, stop, no, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Oh, okay, he said it. That was my yeah. reaction the whole time yeah. I was watching that. Yeah. I was like, was Ryan, like, what, what are you doing, what baby you doing? boy? How? I don't know. Look, I don't know how in this day and age, like, you can still think, like, because it's, because again, if you look at, like, if you, this is what this is for, this is for the Friday Night Tights crowd, right? The Friday Night Tights crowd will, will bring up this kind of stuff constantly. Like, I'm pretty sure this week when they all discuss it, they're all, this is going to be a massive point for conversation like i wouldn't be surprised uh if fandom and is posting their l's gets a lot of like choice clips coming out of that stream because oh, yeah. they don't even hide it anymore it, it they 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 took off their masks a long time ago and it's not even out of courtesy to like you know they don't care because for one they'll keep it just at a point where like they'll be controversial and but like YouTube isn't going to do anything and I don't even know if they should do anything. It's it's like that's up to them. I don't want to get involved in that conversation. Um, but it's like, you know, they, they're not going to get deplatformed for just kind of saying that. You I know? mean, I'm, I'm so like, you know how I feel about like people of color in entertainment. We've talked about this before yeah. where sometimes I will say that and sometimes in some some entertainment, the you old know, people of color kind of like like used for marketing like oh we need the black person here to get black people in the theaters like type stuff and we're sitting here like nah we we didn't need that to get the theaters just give us good content and we'll be there but like yeah this was kind of like one of those i i don't know i i may I, I don't know what point he was making with this one and that clip alone i'm just like maybe maybe i have to go back and watch the entire thing maybe there's context i'm missing but i i just i have no Right now, I have no rational thinking of what what he was trying to get at. Like, what? <laughs> well, exactly. Then you get someone here like like Joseph. Uh, I can't even pronounce that. Uh, he didn't say he didn't like that Jim Gordon was black. He said that factually he is. You can ignore Hollywood agenda all you want. That doesn't change the fact that it exists. Uh, Hollywood agenda being representative of of our culture now of the fact that we are a melting pot society that you know, we have seen a changing in the demographic and I know that frightens a lot of people out there. Uh, okay. It's kind of dumb. I, I but mean, whatever. Joseph, I will say this. I, I know people uh, who've worked in the industry and they have collaborated that there is sometimes there is a, a Hollywood agenda in a lot of things. I will say that I believe that's true as well from things I've seen and how uh, people of color in the LGBTQ community have been used uh, but I will say that, like, even with that said, it's like there is a way to explain that in a, a better way for people to understand. Because if you're trying to like if Ryan's trying to get that message across, saying it the way he said it is not going to do that. It's There's just only two, two moral people of color that were white. What 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 do you take away from that? Right. Like, what do you take away from that? What what exactly is the is is the point of him saying that? When only two people that were white were of good moral character, he is implying that like every other white person was a bad guy, which they're, you know, not all of them were white, just saying. Um, and, uh, you know, but uh, like, it's just what the fuck, man. Right. You know? I mean, that, the way I, the way I interpreted that was the way it sounded. And that's why I said, Ryan, no, was like. The two, the white people in the film were fine, but the black people in the film weren't okay. And I was just like, no, you couldn't see. Just why is it? I'll, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. If you want to ever criticize, uh, why is it that the Joker in 2008's The Dark Knight only kills black people? Go back and watch that movie wait, again. Wait, 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 wait. Go back and watch that movie again. And every person who the Joker specifically kills on screen is a man of color. Wait, wait. Which one? The Joker. The Dark Knight with Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger's Joker. Heath Ledger's Joker on camera only kills men of color. That's it. Hold on. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta look this up. I'm not making that up. 
No one has ever brought it up. He kills. He kills. Uh, that can't be true. He got he, kill he kills. He kills the the yeah. He kills the black guy with the pencil, right? When you first see him, uh, he kills Michael J. White, uh, who who is an amazing amazing. I love Michael J. White. Uh, Spawn ninety seven baby. You, <laughs> I stand for Spawn. I don't. That movie's terrible, but I like Michael J. White. Uh, there was the the black uh, beat cop that he shoots with a shotgun. I think there's one more. No, well, kills on camera. Kills on camera. I don't. We didn't see. I think she blew up, right? Or no, he threw her out the building. I think maybe. Or, I maybe mean, I'm he wrong. blew up a hospital, so I'm assuming there were white people in there. No, we don't know. No, he. We don't know that the bank robbers are all right. Are all white. I mean, I'm but I mean, I, I see the point. I see the point. But yeah, but they're wearing masks. I mean, again, we can't. I'm not going to. Either way, he kills a lot of black people in that movie. And no one's I mean, about black that. people always die in horror movies. They so I was I saw the movie, movie and I was like, man, he's got, you know, I know he's got a white face, but I, that's a little on the nose. Which isn't realistic, by the way. I hate that freaking bullshit when they all when they, for the ongoing joke was like all the black people in the horror movies die first because that was like a legit thing. And I was just sitting here like, nah, bro, when black people hear some spooky shit because we all about that superstition shit, we are out that house. We ain't running upstairs to check on that motherfucking noise. That is the most not that is the most not properly depiction of black people in the horror movies. Nah, bro. When we hear noises, we ain't getting up to find out what it is. We getting off that house. We're moving. We're calling our friggin' retailer like, yo, this house is fucking haunted and we out this bitch. Okay, where we're, most black people are pretty religious or raised to be religious, and uh, we don't fuck with that shit. We're very fucking superstitious. We won't fuck with that noise. Get me? You say we go upstairs check that noise. Nah, bitch, you stay your ass right the fuck here. You see some shit? Get on that phone, call the popo, or we running out this bitch. Sure. It's true. Uh, all right. <laughs> it's true. It's true. We don't fuck around with that ghost shit, dude. They don't, we don't fuck around with ghosts, man. I'm telling you, demons yep. and shit. I don't well, I don't fuck around with ghosts because I don't think that they're real. Wow, they are so real. Well, that's another argument for another time, because ghosts are definitely real. It, now, white dudes wearing sheets, that I believe is real. So that could be We already know the white the white dudes. <laughs> so, Come on that, now. <laughs> wow. Way to make a clan joke on the Yeah, that's not gonna get you canceled or anything. Yeah. What? I'm not saying it's a good thing. It's a terrible thing. I blame John Hodge. Ho- Ho- it's an entirely Ho- like this, d- like deplorable part of our country's history. Ghosts are and they awesome. still do it to this day. I don't. I mean, I don't get it at all. Have you noticed though that like? Well, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I don't have yeah. a joke for that one. It's pretty. Click, funny. click to add title. <laughs> Is that the next subject, guys? Click to add title. It's a new movie coming out. Oh, um, I oops! I had title. this. Uh, actually, I I uh, had screwed that one up. Uh, hold on a second. I thought I had. I didn't realize I had that up on the screen. How are you? Um, how did you? Right. That's like five clicks to put it on screen. How did you not realize that? Because I have it. I had. An, I brought up another thing down here. I thought that's what was there. Oh, that's uh, funny. I guess I had because I was trying to find a very specific image that I thought I'd put on here that I apparently did not. Uh, all right, let me. Um. Well, you know, here. Okay, here. Here's here's what we'll do. <laughs> Have you? Did you guys? Did you see this one today? I was going to bring what, up an image for it, but this is a Bullet Train. No. Yeah, Bullet Train is the new David Leach, um, Brad Pitt action movie. This <gasps> Brad Pitt's dro- making movies again. Yeah, breaking news. PowerPoint. I know. I use PowerPoint for everything, man. Um, He's a weirdo. That's why. Hondo's like I'm the only right wing guy here. I nah, you're not, dude. You're not. But uh, but yeah, check out this. This, uh, this looks great. This is going to be, I think, one of the uh, one of the funnest movies of the summer based on this trailer. I'm sorry. What? Hi. There's a gun. On. Shh, bro. It's the quiet car. Got to use your small inside voice in here, son. There's a gun. <laughs> oh. I am ready. You are getting the new and improved me. Because if you put peace out in the world, you get peace back. 
think you might be forgetting what you do for a living. Take the gun. Every job I do, somebody dies. I'm not that guy anymore. Some conflicts require a gun. Hey, this is nice. Okay, what am I snatching and or grabbing? A briefcase. You said you wanted simple for your first job back. Doesn't get simpler. You stab me? <laughs> yeah, looks great. It will ruin your life the way you ruin mine. Dude, I don't even know you. There's nothing simple about this job. Something else going on here. Yeah, I'm not the only one on this train looking for this case. Evan, mm. where's the briefcase? Oh, it's not shit. It was just there. We are right on the table. Everything that's ever happened to you. This is gonna sting, bitch! Oh. Has led you. Is that Cardi B? Uh, maybe. Wait. That's a shit deal. Oh, no, thank you. You know what? Do you have um, anything sparkling? That's the one. Thank you. Domo arigato. You sure you want to talk this out? Not particularly, no. Uh, okay. Exclusively in movie theaters. That's going to that, be awesome. Yeah, that looks fun. There's a good, good cast there. Very good cast. It looks fun. It's nice to see Brad Pitt doing something again. It's been a while since I've seen him in anything good. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Shogun here says it's like a funny Snowpiercer. Actually, I would argue it's more like Smoking Aces. The Joe Carnahan uh, Hitman movie that came out, I want to say, 06. If you've ever ever seen Smoking Aces, you've got to check it. That's great. Uh, this is like what I love about this, for one, is that is David Leach. So he, who did Deadpool 2, Hobbs and Shaw and Atomic Blonde. Also co-directed the first John Wick. So if you're getting John Wick vibes, that's a reason. But another part of this, though, is that normally his movies don't have the best color palette. They're, they're kind of like devoid of color. If you go and you really look at like Atomic Blonde, it's very bleak. But that could be reminiscent of the fact that it's all about, you know, the Iron Curtain. Whoa. Uh, so what? I'm looking at the cast list. So we got Brad Pitt, obviously. Uh, Sandra Bullock, Lady Gaga. Uh, let's see. We also got, okay. So that was Zazie beats, not Cardi, Cardi B. I couldn't tell it was too quick. Sorry. Um, then of course, you know, the homie Hiroki, I can't even say his name here. Hero Yuki Sonata, which Who I, I think was it. also an army of the dead. No, I think he's he in, was, yes, he was, he was, yeah. he's in a lot of, he was also in Mortal Kombat. He played Scorpion. He's in a lot of movies. I love him. Um, Brian Tyree Henry. I know who that is. I've seen him in many stuff. They got, wow, they got uh, the dude from Hero, Masioka. The, the, okay, the Japanese okay. dude from, from Hero. Um, yeah, they got a pretty good cast of people here, which I was surprised to see Sandra Bullock on that list. And Lady Gaga. I was like, where who, where are they going to fit in? But yeah, they got a pretty decent cast here. It's very interesting. I'm I'm actually excited. But I love uh, uh, Hiro Yuki. I, everything he's in, I love him. He's a really good actor. I'm yeah, I think this this one looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh Benson here for two pounds, buddy. Thank you. Says Bullet Train is missing Steven Seagal. It is. Oh fuck Steven Seagal. Uh well, okay, yeah. I mean, sure, he's an asshole, but uh I don't know, man. Like I'm like like I grew up watching, you know, Above the Law, Out for Justice, Hard to Kill, Under Siege, On Deadly Ground, Under Siege 2, The Glimmer Man, Executive Decision. I can't stand uh, Exit Seagal. Wounds. How can, oh my God, how can you not stand? I, I mean, he is like, the most cockiest mother effer. He, this yeah. Dude, he went at Jean-Claude Van Damme, bro, all because Jean-Claude. And here's the thing. I've watched interviews with Steven Seagal ask, like when he, he gets asked questions about Jean-Claude Van Damme. Because, of course, you have two non-Asian martial art uh, action stars, right? And, of course, they're going to ask each other about the other ones because they were the biggest ones at the time. But when you watch Steven Seagal's interviews when he gets asked about Jean-Claude Van Damme and then you watch Jean-Claude Van Damme get asked about Steven Seagal. And in the beginning, Steve, Jean-Claude Van Damme was actually really, like, civil. 
with Steven, but then Steven would just be a dick about it. Like, oh no, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't acknowledge other martial arts. They're not martial arts. I'm like, bro, you are the most cockiest mother effer. Oh yeah, world. no, he absolutely was. And, but you, you gotta is. understand though. Oh no, he super is, but you gotta understand. It's like at the time that was like, that was like the motif he put out there. Cause he didn't have like the muscles or like of Schwarzenegger or like even like the, the, you know, the like, or Stallone, you know, like back then it was like, those were the top two, but then you had like Van Damme and you had Seagal. Now Van Damme is a much better actor. I mean, fuck man. Like, you know, hard target fucking, um, uh, Lionheart fucking hard. Bro, oh, was even it? street fighter. I'll give him that dude. Yeah. I fucking adore street fighter. That movie is so goddamn it's a good. Classic. I it's don't a care what anyone says. I know it's one of my guilty pleasures. Street it is. Fighter. It. I just love the, I just love the one liners in that movie. Like you will always remember that day as the day I came to your village and destroyed your family. But for right. me, it was a Tuesday. I mean, I'm butchering the line because Raul Julia yeah. was the shit. Yeah, right. Well, I rest love, in peace, Raul but like, Julia, bro. oh hell yeah. But like time cop was a great movie. Fucking, um, uh, death warrant was great. Uh, uh, what was it? I think it was like double, what was it? Uh, double, double, double impact. I think was the one that he did with, um, uh, with fucking Dennis Rodman. Right. No, oh no, no, no. Double impact was the one where he played twin brothers. Double team was the one that he did the kind of weird one he did with, uh, Dennis Rodman. Uh, you know, there was, oh my God, man. I fucking, <laughs> Yo. oh, I'm not universal soldier for crying out loud. Right. Uni- Bro, yeah. did you see, did you see Jean-Claude Van Damme at one point? Because at, at one point, I think even Jean-Claude Van Damme was getting tired of Steven Seagal running his mouth and talking shit. And he's like, I, I, you know, I got nothing against Steven. He's a, he's a good dude. And, you know, I heard the things he said, but like, you know, I still respect him as a martial artist, but you know, he could lose a little weight. And I was like, yo, it's John Club Van Dam throwing that shade at Steven Seagal. I was dead. I was like, he ain't wrong though. Like, <laughs> you martial artist, you got a freaking dad bod, bro. I can't. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, like, uh, uh, I'm just saying it's like, look, I know Seagal is a piece of shit. Okay. Oh, he's I know he's a piece of shit. I can't stand Steven but, Seagal. But if someone were to be like, yo, oh, okay, actually, actually check this out. So I was doing, when I was doing research on uh, The Fugitive for Patio Commentary, the director of The Fugitive also did Under Siege. In fact, he got The Fugitive because of Under Siege. He had worked with Seagal once before. I think it was on Above the Law. And, and they brought him back together for this one. But the thing is, Apparently, like he didn't come out and say it, but he uh, the rumor is that he fucking hated Seagal because if you go and look at Under Siege, it's a full two hour movie. Steven Seagal is the main character and he's only in it for 47 minutes. I don't care what you say. I hate Steven. Dalton, no, we were friends and I'm not friends with you no more. I'm just no, no. <laughs> but I mean, it's like even the director of Under Siege was like, yo, fuck that guy. <laughs> And I they can't. they and they Man. made Tommy Lee Jones more of the main character because Tommy Lee Jones was the shit. So was Gary Busey. Oh. So was freaking Cole Meany. So was Erica Laney. I'm sorry. I fucking I adore can't. Under Siege. I adore I know, but Under I Siege. I just can't stand Steven Seagal. Thanks a right? lot, Benson, for triggering me. I oh, right. Lose. Kira. Oh, my God, dude. Fuck yeah. Sudden death. So, the one is Die Hard. Oh. Okay. It's, no, that's a John claude Van Damme movie. Uh, it's, it's like 97, 98 when that one came out, but John, it's sudden death is, um, he's a fire marshal and there is a hockey, the NHL, the NHL playoffs are happening at like the Stanley cup is happening at this, uh, at this arena. And like, I think the vice president or the president's going to be there. So he's just like, he's just there, like kind of doing his job and he's getting ready to go home as terrorists take over the stadium in order to like kidnap the vice president or whatever. It's the same fucking plot of Die Hard, except he then has to go and like start. He starts fighting through the terrorists in order to go and save the day, dude. Fucking oh my god! I know they did uh, Sudden Death Two with Michael J. White, and it's on Netflix. I haven't watched it yet, but like, is the first one on there? Because oh my god, guys, we gotta totally watch fucking Sudden Death. Like, I love that goddamn movie. I saw that a couple times in theaters. I wasn't even old enough to go see it. It was one of the first R-rated I ever saw in theaters because it was playing at a at a dollar theater, and they never checked ID, so we just like went over and saw it a bunch. Oh my! I love Sudden Death, dude. That movie is so f- nerd. Nerd. Uh, shut so up, nerds. Uh, have I heard about Van Damme's final movie? I heard something going on with that. Please let me be another ex- uh, expendable. <laughs> 
Oh yeah. Oh mo oh mo moon. I oh how could I even forget, man? Fucking of course, dude. Fucking Bloodsport, man. Uh Frank Dukes, you know? Like Frank Dukes, baby. That was the very first R-rated movie I ever saw was Bloodsport. It, it was like 1987, and I was like five years old. My mom was on a date uh to go see Robocop, and I was furious at her because I really wanted to see Robocop. The five-year-old me, you could tell, was really kind of into this violent shit. Robocop. And I wanted to see, I was so fucking mad because she's like, well, I'm going to go on a date with this guy. And I'm like, all right, well, what are you guys going to go do? She's like, oh, we're going to go see a movie. And I'm like, you can't go see Robocop. She's like, why not? Because like, you're going to take me to go see Robocop. She's like, you can't see Robocop. You're five. And I'm like, yeah, but it's, it's, it's a robotic police officer. Like, I want to see this movie. She's like, you can't see this movie. It's whatever. So she calls like her friend Heidi and Heidi and her boyfriend come over and I forget the boyfriend's name, but they brought over, uh, they brought over Bloodsport on VHS. And they're like, all right, we're going to watch Bloodsport. And I'm like, what's this movie? And they're like, oh, you're going to like it. It's, you know, this action movie fucking blew my mind, blew my goddamn mind. Yeah, blew. I mean, I'll, have you ever seen Bloodsport? No, I have to watch. Oh, my. OK, we're watching the trailer. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, oh my. You this guys is got the, him so excited. He just got you have a phone no, right here. You have no fucking. Oh, my God. Bloodsport is the shit. Uh, it's um, and no, 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 no. It's oh, sorry. It's 1988 is when it came out. I guess I was watching when I was younger. I got my years mixed up. Um, all right. This is uh, how does this only have a 6.8 on IMDb? That is some shit. That is some absolute dog shit. What are you talking about? Fucking IMDb. Get your shit together. This is like a 10 out of 10. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna complain about it because I fucking love Bloodsport, man. <laughs> based five-year-old watching robocop and plus four i was like six i was i was wrong um you know anyway all right uh let's see here this is the trailer for this one canon films yeah for centuries oh the society of the black dragon has sanctioned an ancient rite of combat known as the kumite open only to the world's most lethal warriors it has never been won by a westerner you are not oh, I did see this. I can do it now. Yeah. For the first time, the true story of America's God super damn, agent John Frank Claude Dukes God. can be revealed. Uncle Sam can't afford to let you get hurt. I'm going to go. Frank is going to fight in the Kumite, and we're here to stop him. An awesome human weapon. There's me just looking at it. Who infiltrates the Chinese underworld. I did not come this far to stop him. I'll take him. Enter a forbidden competition. Why don't you just get me in strict rules? No press. You telling me you never break rules? Where every fighting style, every worthy opponent, every deadly technique I... clash in savage combat. Time to separate the men from the boys. I... And only one will triumph. Now I will break you. International martial arts sensation John Claude Van Damme in Blood Sport, the true story of the ultimate champion. It's such a good movie. I by know way, it's bullshit. I know it's bullshit, but I don't care. By the way, by the way, uh, rest in peace, movie voice guy. Yeah, gone but never forgotten. I actually was sad the day I heard that dude died. <laughs> yeah, no, that was uh, uh, was that that wasn't no that Don Pardo was the guy from SNL. Uh, yeah, I know the true story behind Bloodsport is false. I know, I know that, but it's, I don't care. I love the movie. Uh, Rational here for two bucks, thanks, buddy. Says double impact, Inferno, hard target, and replicant. Yeah, yeah, some some good Van Damme films. Uh, Reed here says Percy Jackson starts filming June first. Uh, Rio Den said that they are working with kids to play Percy, Annabeth, and Grover. Can't wait. Oh, awesome, dude. I'm looking forward to this one. Um, thank you for the five bucks, by the way. Spherical Man here says, and yet Jarbo hasn't watched a single Rocky movie. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I don't need to. Are you to. serious? I don't need to. I yes, had I, I had Seagal. Oh, I had, God, I I had fucking Schwarzenegger. I had uh I had Van Damme. All right. I had uh Chuck Norris and shit. All right, like yeah. Oh my God, fucking like Hitman, fucking uh, uh, the or the Chuck Norris's The Hitman was a really solid movie. You had fucking Charles Bronson back in the day. There was like you know, uh, the Death Wish shit dude was fucking great. 
I, look, I know I need to watch Rocky. I've still never seen Godfather, okay? But I'm just telling you, it was like these movies, man, were like, these movies were my fucking childhood in so many ways. So, you know, it's straight up like, I fucking, I love these movies and shit. Um, did you guys ever see, you ever see The Quest? It was the one, the first one that Jean-Claude Van Damme directed. And it was literally the same story as Bloodsport, but it was just set like in the early 1900s. Oh, Don LaFontaine. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Yeah, I don't think I want to talk to you after you just said you never watched any Rocky movies, bro. What, man? I've already talked about how I've never seen a fucking Rocky bro, movie. I don't know how you do movie talk and you haven't Because I don't want to see a movie about a loser, say. Bro, I miss me with this bullshit hypocrisy <laughs> you're giving me right now. This man runs a freaking show called Three Buck Fucking Theater, and he hasn't even seen a single Rocky movie, bro. And you want to talk about the freaking bring up blood sports. Saggy, have you seen blood sports? Coming from the dude who hasn't seen Rocky, at least I've yeah, seen a Rocky Because I movie. know peak cinema. I know oh, peak whatever. cinema. That's what's you are, happening. You are blood sport is girl, peak bro. cinema. Yeah, Rocky Rocky's just a dude who's like running up a flight of stairs. That's like I think in the second one, right? Or whatever. And like, you know. Oh. Uh, cause I had the tigers from Rocky two, I think. Right. But like Rocky, went, Adrian, yeah, you lost bitch. Fuck. Bro, Why am I going to watch this shit? You make my brain hurt. It wasn't about that. It was about the fucking journey. I'm done, bro. <laughs> this man runs a fucking movie talk show every fucking night almost. And he's never seen one. Oh, Rocky oh, Taylor, Taylor, Jackie Chan is better than everyone you just listed. Dude, we have talked about Jackie Chan here before. Uh, you know, but just looking at his American work, right. Or at least what was American releases back with 1995's rumble in the Bronx. Uh, I mean, like, look, you had like Mr. Nice guy, uh, uh, that was kind of dumb. There's, um, uh, oh, my favorite is operation condor. That one is the shit. And I know there's a whole weird trilogy thing with that. And I'm sure H parts right now is itching to remind me about what the actual chronological order is, but I love Jackie Chan movies too, man. Fucking, um, all that shit back in the day. Oh, fuck Benson bringing up best of the best. Yeah. Best of the best was really good. I actually like best Why of the best too. Uh, oh, I don't know. Are they bullying? What, ju me? what just happened? Somebody said, Rocky. people said it's Rocky three. It's Rocky three. And everyone just, oh no. Typing. Hondo. Hondo says type R to make oh, Matt watch okay. Rocky. He's in there fucking talking. Bro, shit. The masses are speaking. I can't believe you i'm i'm so i'm so tilted right now y'all don't even understand i'm like sitting in my chair I had to turn my fan off my heater off i was like yo i'm getting too hot right now because this man really openly admitted on a fucking movie talking podcast that he's not seen a single rocky movie. i've even seen rocky okay i've even seen rocky and that shit isn't even something i like 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 i seen it and you didn't see rocky bro yeah i didn't see rocky Yo, you are you are just hurting me right now. My fucking heart is hurt right now. You literally shattered my soul. Uh, it's fine. You're fine. You're good. I'm going to have fucking withdrawals tonight because of you. Then go watch Rocky. Feel better. No, you should watch Rocky. Watch it with me so we can say you did it. Well, punk. What's this? <laughs> uh, hold on. This is uh, this is this. Okay. This came up today on Netflix. They posted this. Uh, it's an official poster for Cliff Beasts 6. The Battle for Everest, Memories of a Requiem, starring Pedro Pascal, Karen Gillan, Keegan-Michael Key, Maria Bakalova, and David Duchovny. What is this? The six this is us? a tr Check this out. I don't know. I do not. Hold there on. are six of Wait. them? No, there's not. There's not. What does it say at the end here? Language throughout, sexual content, drug use, and some violence. Sick. It's a comedy? It's a, yeah, it's, uh, this is a, apparently a real movie. Uh, according to Discussing Film here, this is definitely real film releases on April 1st. So it's, it's, look, this is their April Fool's Day prank. So. Can you do you really think that they're going to call something Cliff Beast Six Battle for Everest Memories of a Requiem? It's Netflix. Have you seen some of the shit on Netflix, bro? 
Yeah, but they're going to, I mean, look at, look at, they got Pedro Pascal, Karen Gillan, David Duchovny, you know. I mean, I'm just saying, have you seen. Yeah, no, I've seen, I've shit? seen, I've seen, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen I've some seen. really bad movies on Netflix that I've just watched. Yeah. Like, like, well, what? I'm going to, I, I finally got access uh, to my, uh, to my media center contacts again with Netflix. I'll have to try to reach out to get a, maybe get an early screening. Uh, De, uh, Degrassi here. Oh my God, dude. Ringo stars caveman. Bro. I can't. Watch oh, did you ever see caveman? <sighs> it's got like Ringo star, like in Shelley long. No one talks in the movie. Was that? Oh, it, it's all like, uh, I think Dennis Quaid is in it too, but like, it's just, it's a, it's a movie about cavemen. And like, I think like, uh, they battle dinosaurs and they're trying to survive at one point. One dude, like if I recall gets like, he, he falls in a river and like the river takes him to like the ice age and there's like weird monsters in the ice age and shit. It's a weird movie. No, <laughs> don't listen. You, you do not have any right to ask anyone if they see movies when you haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, I can. I can absolutely <laughs> say that. No, you can't. I can absolutely say that, a hundred percent. You're sus. You're sus. I can totally that. say that. Right? There's a lot of movies out know. there. There's a lot of movies out there that you've never seen that I've seen. Look, so. Okay, hold on, pause. Listen, I want somebody. I don't care who it is in the chat, but one of y'all every single night needs to ask him if he's seen Rocky yet, so he can just shut you up by watching. It. Is it? Uh, is it? Is it streaming anywhere? Like, I don't want to watch all know, five because I really, I really don't care. Just watch the um, first one, and I'll get. You know, and I'll, and I'll like I could up. watch. I think what one, two, and three, or whatever, or one and two specifically. But like I know four and five kind of suck, right? Like number five, I remember gets a lot of shit. And then I know we did uh, Rocky Balboa, which uh, we had at the drive-in when that came out, and I never watched it because I'd never seen the other one, so I thought I'd be lost in the story. And then, um, but I heard it was really good. And then I know there's Creed, and the Creed movies apparently are really good. So I know there's a whole like Rocky universe of, of films to watch here. Okay, so um, there's like eight of them. I think kind Rocky of, if you... is coming to Netflix because it says "Remind Me," but I don't see it on Netflix. Hold on, let me look at my Netflix. What the heck is this? The Guardians Man, of I, I think I think the reason why it triggers her is because of her geographical location. Um, ex what? Oh no, hold on. I was thinking of somebody else. What are you talking about? I thought you. I thought you were near Philadelphia. <laughs> I mean, you kind of are, right? No, no, listen. It's just because, like, Rocky, like, he, listen, no, it's not even that. Spirit Command is just, like, he brings up movies that are, like, old, right? But Rocky is also, like, an old movie that was, like, a, even I watched it. So I'm like, how have you bringing up all these old movies, but you never saw Rocky? I mean, like, it's just different. That's shit. like somebody saying they haven't seen The Karate Kid, but they're watching Cobra Kai. It's, like, weird. Uh, no comment. You didn't see Karate Kid? Jarble, please, please tell me you're trolling. Not a single one. Jarble. Which, 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 which one has the girl? You saw the next Karate Kid before you watched any of the other ones? Doesn't. Oh. Which my. one has Jackie Chan? You are trolling. You're definitely trolling. I can't with you tonight. You can't be doing that to my heart, bro. Like. Stop lying. You seen you seen the Karate Kid. Stop. I really <laughs> thought you were serious for a second. I was gonna literally lose my shit on you. I was gonna course, lose my shit. Of course I've seen the Karate Kid. Bro, if you didn't see the Karate Kid, but I haven't I seen like, but I haven't seen fun. Cobra Kai. I have not seen Cobra Kai. Why I've seen the first seen? episode of Cobra Kai. It was good. Uh it just at the time I wasn't able to like uh I wasn't able to dive in. I, I know, I know it's massive, it's huge, everyone loves it. I'm sure no, I will it's, too. it's not even that. Yeah, you will really like it because if you've liked the Karate Kid series, it does have that. Like they they do nostalgia right, and you need to watch it because up to the last season. Oh my god, the last season, Jarbo, <gasps> bro. Yeah, yeah. I I know, I know, I know. Everyone I ever talking about the Cobra Kai. Um, no, bro, I have Terry seen Terry Silverback. Like uh, the actual Terry Silver, they brought him back. It's been a long time since I've seen it, so I don't remember their names. You don't remember Terry Silver? He was in Karate Kid 3. He was in Karate Kid 3. And that was when they brought in Mike Barnes. Remember they had the, they, them come back? No, like... it's, dude, it's literally been since, like, the 90s since I've seen them. Like, oh, I, I've God. seen them. I remember, like, isn't the second one where he goes to Japan? 
Or is that the third one? Yeah, the, the second one, he goes to Japan. And the third one where they bring in Terry Silver. Okay, okay. Because, like, I remember, like, he goes to Japan and he gets his ass beat because, you know, uh, that's what happens in these movies. And they whatnot. brought that dude back, too. Chosen, they brought him back. Okay. I, yeah. I got to watch they, him like, again. They brought back a lot of, like, so in season two of Cobra Kai, they brought back, don't, like, a I don't, lot don't of don't people. I, well, I mean, I'm, I, I should check out. Eventually. I'm not telling I, you the whole thing. I'm just well, saying, watch I, it. I, how have you not watched Cobra Kai? You stopped at episode one, my dude. What is going on? I don't have all the time in the world like I used to. Anyway, uh, well, here, I guys, actually a couple super chats to get through here. I totally uh, missed these ones here. You guys are great. But Cloud for 10 bucks Canadian, buddy. Thank you. Says, sometimes I wish that dickless chuds like Ryan and his ilk would just start dropping the hard R so they can stop hiding how they truly feel about people of uh, people of color characters, actors, and POCs in general. I mean, I, Damn. yeah, uh, well, uh, speaking of that, um, I was, uh, I'll bring it up here. I was sent another clip Damn, from, from, from Ryan. That's a hard, that's a hard, that's a hard hit. Yo, um, McLeod was not pulling punches tonight. <laughs> Yo, McLeod brought well, his A game. <laughs> all things considered, I think a lot, a lot of people aren't pulling punches. Uh, so apparently there's more, there's another 30 seconds. I was just sent this. I haven't listened to it yet, so. Uh, let's, let's get another, uh, take here from, from Mr. RK Outpost. Six. And there was one line that was in this movie that really threw me out of it. It is when Catwoman basically is saying they only care about themselves, these white privileged people. You didn't need to use the word white. You could have just said privilege and that would have basically done the job. But they said white privileged people is very distinct, very much stood out. It bothered me and it took me out of it. It's not something that needed to be done, but they threw it in there. I think it was way too on the nose. Didn't like it. I mean, I, I, I'm going to be that person. Shot. No, I, I kind of agree with him on that one. I do. It's a monster. Only, only, I know, but only because it's like, okay, so it doesn't, it shouldn't matter that Selena Kyle is black or white. Selena Kyle was a thief. She stole from rich people anyways. So I think that adding that line to be like, Hey, I'm a black cat woman. That that that's what it sounds like to me. So I will agree. Like you didn't have to do that line because you could just say all these privileged people because rich people, which is what you know, basically in my opinion, that would be what Selena Kyle would be targeting. Rich people in general. It's not limited to black and white. And because it's Gotham, you know, rich people came in all different colors, right? All different shapes and sizes. So I'm like, I I kind of agree with that that specific take because it is kind of true. Like you didn't need to do that line to express that she was a criminal and she didn't care about the privileged people, all the rich people benefiting and profiting off of crime and corruption. So I, I will say with that context, I can say, I do kind of agree with that line. The other one, no, that was bad, but that line in particular, yeah, I can kind of say like, yeah, well, was- but, it, but there's context within the movie. There's context within the movie. Like, do they about, show any discrimination against people of color in the movie? Like defined discrimination. I should like, say, well, I, that sounds very weird to say, but like, no, I mean, like at no point do they, uh, I mean, you clearly see that there's like a class divide. You clearly see like Gotham is a very dark city and, uh, it, you know, there's a lot of poverty there and everything else, but that actually ties into the story that ties into the story. It's very saying, well put race, into the story. Was race ever an issue that was addressed in, the, in like was race at all anything like a point of a pinnacle of a storyline plot that had anything to do with um the different races of people in gotham because like if it was i could see why that line makes sense but if she was just saying that line because you know rich pe- because because of the fact that she's a black cat woman i would i ha- hate to say it but like i do agree with ryan's take there because that makes no sense like you could easily portray that point of explaining that the rich are profiting off and you know they're privileged without r- mentioning a race because in my opinion the race shouldn't have mattered like, she's a beautiful woman. She's Catwoman. She's her version of Selena Kyle. Eartha Kitt being another black woman who portrayed Catwoman in the past. Like, it doesn't matter what race they are, right? She's went, she's well, been black and white well, before. So without, without going into it, because, um, again, I don't want to spoil it too much. Sifu here does say, in context of the film, she has a point. And she does in the context of the film. Now, he he is giving... Um, a reaction. So, you know, it's like I gave my reaction and again, it's like a three hour movie. So you walk out and you're just kind of, your brain's kind of, oh my God, right? It's hard to collect your thoughts on that. Uh, no, that that previous comment was that he had done about 
the characters were terrible. Mm-hmm. This one, though, it's like, again, in context of the film, it makes sense. And it has a lot to do with I can't go into it without without spoiling part of the movie. So I just can't. No, I get to, it. That's why have, I have yeah, to watch the yeah, movie. Like, find out. And it's a really good movie. So like you should really see it. Um, you all should really see it because then we can talk about it. But there's there's a lot there with the movie that, um, again, it ties into it. Um, I think he's just again, well, anything, anything that disparages like, you know, anything that might come across as woke, he has to comment on anything that might be considered like anti SJW or whatever he has to comment on, you know, or he, he has to be that guy. Like it's, it's with, with Ryan. I don't believe it's an act. I think it's really his personality, but like, that is the condition that he has put himself in. That is the, the situation in regards to his livelihood that he's right. put himself in. Well, I, so you, but you can never look at it then through the lens of objectivity because it's entirely subjective. Like, you know, his mentality, you know, where he's coming from. So when he makes a comment like that, it is not for the same reasons that you could argue it. Like you would argue it like your way of arguing it. I can understand you being a woman of color and and you're coming at it from that perspective and you have a different lens. And I get that. Ryan is not like that though. Ryan is not looking at it from that perspective. He's out there because this is the thing. If you listen to Friday night tights uh, or even Gary, when, you know, he'll go like, why are white men being disparaged all the time? And he really speaks to that, to that incel white nationalist audience. And, and that's again, in regards to this movie, you know, there's a little bit stuff there that might hit a little too close to home. Right. I will say I stand by my comment because I haven't seen the movie. So when I get the full context, if, if that's the case, if what you guys are telling me, it's like, it is important to think I'll probably say, yeah, maybe, you know, that was a stupid thing to say, but like, I, I get like, cause I haven't seen the movie in a lot of haven't only certain people who saw it, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean that, that whole thing is, like I said, if it, if, if it's, if, if it doesn't have anything to do with the plot, it doesn't make sense. For her to say that, then I'll be like, yeah, that was still a stupid thing to say. Well, when you see the movie, we can talk about it uh, because there's a there's a lot there. And I really want to watch it again, because the more I think about it, the more I'm like, oh, my God, it was so good. It was it's a good story. It's uh, well, the reviews are really good. The reviews are good. And I'm not going to lie. I didn't want to see it because I was tired of Batman films. But when I saw the reviews and they're like, "Okay, they didn't do an origin story. Okay, that's that's a that's a star for me. Um this is this is not like a a, the same batman you know it's not the same type of batman style like there's a lot of problems he's going through and i'm so like okay you kind of reeling me in a little bit come on give me in so i was like all right the reviews say this is not the same batman so i'll I'll give it a watch yeah yeah it's uh it's definitely um you know uh different and but it works out really 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 well um you know and uh, yeah, yeah, Sifu here says you have to understand Catwoman and her background to understand that. And, and that's explained in the movie. So you're okay. good there. But all right, as we kind of uh, start winding this thing down a little bit, there's a few more things to get to here. Um, just to quickly point out that we talked about this very briefly last night, but at the end of the stream, and I had to cut the stream early because I had to go to the bathroom so bad that like I, I was, I had to leave. That's Are how bad turtling? it was. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. God. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like it was awful. bad. It was uh, tortoising is what I'm going to call it. Uh, it's so bad. Anyway, uh, Chris Stuckman here, YouTuber, you know, film reviewer, Chris Stuckman is doing a movie, uh, and he put out a Kickstarter Yay. and raised the $250,000 in roughly 24 hours. I believe he did it Yay! in one day. That's awesome. Uh, and so congrats to Chris Stuckman for that one. Looking forward to seeing what he does with this. Um, oh. Jess, I did see, uh, yes, Jess, I do have it up right here. Sorry, uh, I just can't bring it up on screen, unfortunately. Jesse, your matinee member for seven months. Thank you, buddy. Says some of the scenes in Cobra Kai are cringe. <gasps> I uh, th- yes. those be those be those be fighting words, I guess. Yes. Um, but I don't know. I don't know specifically. Uh, and then also here, I did miss this one. I'm so sorry, Jeremy. I grabbed this one here. Talking about Canon films in regards to the uh, to the Bloodsport trailer. Says, uh, hey, another Canon films great is Life Force, one of the most bonkers flicks out there. And it's getting a 4K Blu-ray in May by Scream Factory. Uh, Life Force. I've never heard of that one, but uh, I will. Uh, uh, I'll bring up the. Tra- see if I can bring up the trailer. Yeah, you do that while I shake my head in disappointment over Jess's comment. I'm disappointed in you. Shame. I okay. thought we were cool, Jess. What happened? I thought we were cool. Thought we were cool. But instead, we drool. Here, we'll just watch the trailer because he paid the 10 bucks. So, 
Oh, you got to take it off the screen so we can. I I'm going to take it off the screen. Okay, I just want to. I got to be on co-host and things. I am. <laughs> Uh, 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 Anthony here wants to know if I've ever seen uh, Black Mama, White Mama. That sounds so familiar. Sounds uh, cringe. Sounds cringe. I, I know it sounds cringe. All right, let's. Uh, I haven't seen this movie, I don't think. Oh, TriStar, Disney. They watched. They waited. Now their time has come. They fought. Out of the depths of space, the ultimate terror. Moving, searching, destroying. From body to body, from life to life, from man to woman, changing, growing, burning for our life force. What Old the credits. hell? <clears throat> um, what the? Was that titties? Uh, I didn't see titties. I saw titties. You say what you want to see. I saw some titties. I see titties. I see side boob. I see more titties. A lot of titties. Does she like have sex? With Was that Gozer? What, what the, the hell? There's a lot going on here. Wait, are they are the vampires? Poltergeist from the special effects creator of Star Trek The Motion Picture. Life Force. In the blink of an eye, the terror begins. I yeah. saw a lot of titties. All right, so and there's a I don't know if there's another trailer there or whatever, but that uh, uh, that looks pretty cool. Looks like a lot of titties. Space vampires. That's what I was. Yeah, space vampires, man. <laughs> Degrassi here says I love that beautiful trash. Of titties. A lot of titties. A lot, a lot of titties. Lot of uh, very cool with that. Very happy with that. Uh, bring on the titties. He'll watch Thank this you. before he watches Rocky. That's the fucking sad. Thing I will about most this. likely. Yes, I will most likely do that before that so all right moving on here thank you very much for that uh uh jeremy thank you so much i got that right all right also your fandom says charlie cox thinks that a pg-13 daredevil can absolutely work but daredevil is never going to work as well in a pg world as spider-man does that that makes sense i mean th their approach was going to be entirely different as as you know the, the stuff goes on i think Daredevil can work in a PG thirteen world. It's just minus the blood is really going to be it, you know. I mean, I see, because Spider Man is more like catered to like kids and young. Well, mostly, I would say mostly kids. Spider Man's mostly you know something that kids can enjoy. A superhero kid. Daredevil not so much. Daredevil is not like a kid friendly superhero. In my no, opinion. I don't want it to be PG thirteen. I think it should go. I should go hard R. You know? Oh, I think it should be rated R too. Absolutely. Um, but I can see it operating in that world because they're going to have to choose, right? TV TV MA is in between PG thirteen and R. It it it, it kind of ebbs more on the side of R, but at the same time, you're like ah shit shit. shit. Yeah, you know, it is what it is what it is on that front. Um, I hope they don't soften. Matt Murdock in that world. I really hope they don't do that. I just, I feel like they're going to, but with the parental controls coming to Netflix, when those shows are coming to Disney plus, sorry, when those shows get there, I feel that it's going to end up being probably like a lot better. You know, like, mm. I think, I think, I think they're going to maybe, uh, maybe not do that. Um, all right, let's keep going here. Uh, so what we got is the penguin spinoff series is much closer that to production than the Gotham PD series. Now, this is interesting because with the movie having on, on its way out and when people see it, here's what you need to know about about the show. This show is actually the scrapped storyline from what was going to be the Batman 2. Hmm. So the show about because Penguin was going to be the villain in the Batman 2. Now they're going to make him this kind of rise to power with uh, with with the show and then have that probably lead into everything with the Batman because when you watch the Batman you'll have a better idea of the context I don't want to say anything but it's a really cool thing because Colin Farrell as Penguin was excellent in the movie so I'm really excited to see uh where they're going to take the character given like how crazy he is in certain ways and also like will Batman make an appearance in in the Penguin spinoff like I'm really wondering about that mm. uh, I would assume at some point he would have to um, at least like maybe not Robert Pattinson, but like someone wearing the suit and being in silhouette. 
So I don't know if Pattinson will cameo. Maybe. Uh, Sifu here says he killed it. Absolutely. The um, fact that he's not even recognizable is still shocking. He he really wore cool he wore that costume to a Starbucks to see if anybody would recognize him, and they didn't. And he actually worked with a vocal coach in order to to bring on the accent that he has. You can't tell that it's Colin Farrell. Like you can see his eyes and see that it's Colin Farrell uh, in makeup in the couple scenes, but other than that, he's he's relatively uh, you know indistinguishable from from anybody else you know damn well colin was like can i take this shit home so when i go to like start like a grocery store and go shopping i don't have to worry about paparazzi yeah but he has to like put on a fat suit just to go to the store it'd be easier just to freaking like you know doordash that I, shit. I would 100 percent put on a fat suit to go out in public if i was a celebrity <laughs> i'd be like nope no one's recognized me i just want to enjoy going out without cameras or people asking me for autographs i'm putting on that fat suit Okay, that makes sense. All right, that Especially that makes kids. I <laughs> yeah sure. Well, all the kids get a little fat suit. <laughs> all the kids. Well, yeah, it, but the thing is, though, he's going to be pretty terrifying. Uh, I think to a lot of kids, so that's going to be a lot of fun. All right, let's move on here. Uh, this just came out today, confirmed uh, today with Collider. Uh, Momoa has officially signed on to play the villain in Fast and Furious Ten. Okay, a bad Jason Momoa. Ooh. A bad, yeah. Well, first time he's played a villain since playing Khal Drogo in uh, Game of Thrones back was in 2011. Was Khal Drogo a villain though? I mean, Khal Drogo wasn't necessarily a villain. He had, you know, he would have been a villain had he actually gone against Westeros um, and survived. But no, I mean, he was a tribal leader who who did what he needed to do for his his people, and uh, but you know, I mean, but there is like what could be considered the um, the raping at the beginning of the season at the show in the book, Daenerys is only 13 at the time. I, no, I know. I know they aged up all like the they, Oh yeah. They had to age her up. Otherwise they had you, that like, this, been cringe. Yeah. This is, ooh, what are you, what are you doing? This isn't hentai. Anyway, this isn't your anime. Shut up. <laughs> but no, no. I, I think that Jason Momoa playing a villain is cool. Oh yeah. Well, it says here that uh, he was seen walking the red carpet for the premiere of the upcoming, the Batman starring his stepdaughter. Uh, he actually made a great comment about that too. On the red carpet, he goes like uh, someone asked about like his kids and he's like, well, their dad is iron man or their dad is Aquaman and their se- sister is Catwoman." You know, kind of runs in the family sort of thing, I guess. Uh, now he confirmed his role on fast 10 stating it's fun. I get to play the bad guy, which I haven't gotten to do for a while. Now I get to be the bad boy, a very flamboyant bad boy, a little panache. Uh, that I'm ex- I love it when, when Momoa kind of goes full, when he goes full Momoa and he just gets to have fun. And I, I think that's, and I think that's one of the things I'm looking forward to the most with fast and furious 10. I like the villains in the fast and furious movies, like the later films, you know, um, not so like the first couple weren't really like that great, but uh, from fast five onward, I think it did. Okay. I you love know. Jason Momoa and every, everything Jason does. He's been really fantastic at in my opinion. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to see him play a, a bad guy. Although Fast and Furious, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've been over Fast and Furious movies for a while. Especially after, um, you know, the tragic loss of one of the main actors, which was really, really sad. Yeah. And uh, it kind of just, like, you know, how could you do a Fast and Furious without him? It's just, it just sucks. Like, I, I know that people might like the new, the other Fast and Furious, but it's like, it's not the same without him. You know, he started with the series and having him gone, it just, it, it sucks. Like, I have not watched a single Fast and Furious movie since the last one that he was in. Uh, Fast 8's really good, actually. I haven't I'm seen sure Fast 9 yet, but eight, eight's fun. Uh, F. Gary Gray did a great job directing it. I'm and, sure And um, I, I think uh, James Wan did an awesome job with number seven. I know Paul Walker's death really impacted me, too. It, like really impacted me. No, um, yeah, that one hurt. That was yeah, death that, that really was bad. Hurt. Yeah. He was he was a good dude too. He did a lot of charity work. Yeah, and everyone has spoke very highly of him. So it's like it kind of broke my heart because I'm like, dude, how can you have Fast and Furious without him? He played. He he started the series. Like it was all about him. And then it was him and Vin Diesel, and it was like, oh, it hurts, man. I can't. I can't. I don't think I'm ready. <laughs> I'm not like ready to watch a Fast and Furious movie. I know it sounds oh. stupid, but. Right, right, right. I forgot Momoa did play the yeah bullet in the head. That's right. He did play that. Yeah, that was uh that was early 2013, I recall. Um, and uh, God, who was the director on that one? It was uh, 
oh man, William something or I forget. But uh, uh, the guy, yeah, 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 I yeah, I saw bullet, I saw bullet in the head. That was that was that was okay. Uh, I got to watch it again. I think it came out like I saw that around the same time I saw like Die Hard, the uh, a good day to Die Hard, the last Die Hard, which was terrible. And then like um, the first uh, Jack Reacher movie with Tom Cruise, which was actually really good. And then I saw this. Uh, all right. Walter Hill. Well, thank you. Walter Hill. That's right. Uh, and he was a good director, too. You know what? Um, Sally Kellerman died the other day and I thought she was already dead, which I feel really bad about. But like she was the villain in the director's cut of payback, which is really good. Uh, rational here says, how would you feel if they brought back Paul Walker as Brian and used the Luke Skywalker tech? Nope, 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 nope. If you want to make me not a fan and I've been a fan since the, the first movie came out in June, 2001, uh, then, uh, that is how you do it. That is, that is no, 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 no way. Uh, uh-uh. how about, I mean, how would you feel about that Saki? Do you want, do you want them to bring back like Paul Walker? with the Luke Skywalker tech? No, I mean, I, I respected that they did it because he didn't finish the scene. They had his brother fill in. So I respected that they did that in honor of him. But at this point, like, I don't think it would work. Cause like with Luke Skywalker, it was different because his scene, like in that last episode of Boba Fett, where he was in there a lot, it, it was like, it made sense, but like doing a whole movie like that, I don't, I don't, I don't, I think it'd be, no, I wouldn't want to see that because it would just bring all that back and it would just hurt. Yeah. Cause like it'd yeah. be the realization, like he's gone, dude. Like we're yeah. not going to see him in that. No, I don't want that. Yeah, I, don't I want definitely it. don't want that, but all right, let's keep going here. Uh, so here's, we get to the last story of the night. Uh, this popped up today in uh variety and, uh, and I agree with it, right? Uh, with this article here, why Zack Snyder's justice league is not eligible for the Oscars fan favorite prize. And this is what a lot of people, a lot of the Snyder fans on, on Twitter, uh, honestly, honestly, I, I fully, uh, I think they should amend it for this. I do feel that this movie it, in the capacity of which it came out and everything else was fantastic. And I think that, you know, they, it, it should have been something that they should have accounted for, but you know, the Oscars are fucking stupid and you know, whatever. Uh, but it, it, it basically, sorry, it says here, that uh, to be eligible for consideration under rules, provisions implemented for the 94th Academy Awards year only, feature films may o- may open in a commercial motion picture theater in at least one of six U.S. metropolitan areas. So it's like it has to be uh, either a uh, a limited release, right? Or, is that's that weird? Not fair, but that's it's not, not fair, fair because the pandemic fair. happened and a lot of films weren't able to be in theaters. Well, but they also put them, but you know, but you're going to still see movies pop up in LA, New York, the Bay Area. Right, but Miami, I'm saying like you know. it's not like if 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 theaters were open across the board, like cool, but like some theaters were still closed because of the pandemic. Some theaters shut yeah. down. Well, because they do the say pandemic. they do say here that drive-in theaters open nightly are included as qualifying commercial venues and. As a person who worked for a drive-in that was open year-round, yeah, that would that definitely uh, rings true. But it does say, though, uh, films intended for theatrical release but initially made available through commercial streaming, VOD service, or other broadcast may qualify if the film is made available on the Secure Academy Screaming Room member site within 60 days. Uh, but the thing is, though, is that they also said here uh, that it's not eligible because it's considered a re-edit. Right. It's considered a re-edit of the movie, which I think is I think it's kind of I mean, look, there was elements of the original film of the 2017 version that did use Zack Snyder's shot footage. Right. Um, And but most of it, you know, from the looks from the feel of it, most of it was all Joss Whedon's additions. And, you know, but the movie still followed the same general plot points. And so as a result of that there, and I think it's a bullshit move. I think it's a bullshit narrative. I think they know, but, but they, the, the Academy is so blind to like, to, 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 to where things are these days. Um, but they, but then another part here, and this is what I highlighted. It says here that the Snyder cut is the fourth most streamed film in 2021. I cannot find concrete data to back that up. Not to say that it wasn't popular, but I can't find the data to back it up. Because they haven't I, released it. Exactly. So I don't know if they're talking about like, is it through Samba TV, the metric that they're using? And, like, uh, where where is the data coming from? Like, is, what about PVOD? Right. How did how did it go in other countries? Like, but I know that it was on. Like, things released. 
No, they're not. Like in some places there were, um, you know, in some places there were, but it was, it's still kind of, it kind of, you know, I don't know. I don't quite know. Uh, it's kind of dumb in my mind, but anyway, going on here, this is what, this is what I think it really, this is what, again, what we all thought that this whole, this whole fan favorite thing was for was for Spider-Man No Way Home because they announced it after they, after they snubbed Spider-Man for, you know, for, for best picture nod, which some people would disagree with that snub. Some people would agree with that snub. It is what it is, but they decided to do this thing. And originally Spider-Man wasn't even like in the lead. You know what I mean? It was a uh, uh, Camille Cabello's Cinderella on Amazon because her her stands popped up on Twitter to, uh, you know, to push for this thing. Right. And Army of the Dead tried, you know, they, they tried doing it. But then now today, Variety drops this article saying that Spider-Man No Way Home's clear leader to win Oscar's first fan favorite award survey suggests. So it, it, it says here. Um, that, uh, that industry watchers, spidey senses were tingling when the Academy on Monday posted a tweet revealing the top 10 leaderboard, uh, in partnership with Twitter, the list, which alongside no way home included, uh, the critically panned Cinderella, as well as the indie film, Minnie Mata and Zack Snyder's army of the dead. Now, Minnie Mata is a Johnny Depp thing. So that's a justice for Johnny Depp crowd. Camilla Cabello being a popular pop star. What I think that's what she does. Uh, clearly I can see that. And then of course you have the Snyder army. Um, but, uh, he also goes on to say here that this particular survey only really surveyed, like, I think it was like, uh, did I get one more here? Yeah. So the morning consult, uh, conducted the survey between February 19th and 20th among a representative sample of only 2,210, uh, us adults. The research outfit said that the survey was an unweighed margin of error, ha has an unweighted margin of error, plus or minus two percentage points. What's worth noting is that only 25% of respondents named a favorite film when prompted, and many of those surveyed said they did not see any new films last year amid the coronavirus pandemic. So, I mean, it really did. Like, everything kind of hurt theaters, right? But uh, most, a lot of people turned out for Spider-Man. So, uh, but, it, you know, looking at this right now, it's showing that Spider-Man is in the lead. The other thing to consider with this, though, is that when you think about how they've been approaching this whole scenario, they just opened it up on their website, too. So you, so instead of originally it was going to be vote on Twitter and then they and then they also allowed you to vote on the website. And since all of that data is going to be held private, clearly they're pushing for this. Clearly, they're pushing for Spider-Man to win. It was always going to win. I do. I think it's a rigged game. Maybe. Maybe. But oh, these awards things are all bullshit. I agree with people in the chat. Like they're lame. It's like they don't they don't take cons the the consumer feedback. They really don't. They're just like we're gonna we're gonna look at the money, the money. How much money did it make? It's like okay, but even if a movie didn't make as much money as you think, that doesn't mean it's still not a good movie. Like you're not they're not doing it for the art anymore. That's what I hate about these things. They're not doing it for the art. They're not doing it because it was a good film. They're doing it because how much money did it make? And that's stupid because there are a lot of, like, I'm not going to lie. Put it this way. Like, so say, so Zach's Justice League movie might have not made as much money as, 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 you know, they had hoped or whatever, right? But it was still a much better movie. It was still amazing to see. And it was still a very good art piece. So what does it matter if it, like, made a ton of money? It was beautiful. Like, it was a good film. It was great storytelling, had great scenes. Even the reshoots were, were great. And it's like, why, why, why does it matter? It's, about, it's supposed to be about the art, right? It's not supposed to be about the money. It's supposed to be about the art. But well, all these award shows, it's well, all about money. It's, all about it's, money. All, it's, it's always been about the money. Sag. No, it's shut your face. Do not tell me the truth. I want to live in my little it, fantasy world. Okay. Well, you can do that. That's fine. Uh, you can do that. That's fine. I just feel like at this point in time, it's, uh, it's probably going to go to Spider-Man. As it should, but we just hit midnight. I actually have to go because I have to be up early in the morning. Aww. So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta call it. I know it's been a fun night. It's been a great night. Thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you, Saggy. Be sure to go check out Saggy Melons with a Z. Check out uh, her channel. Uh, she streams often. Yells at people mostly. Yeah. Uh, so if that's your kink, then there you go. I do it for free, y'all. Do it for free. That's that's a problem. Yeah. Never is. do it for free. 
<laughs> never ever do it for free. But thank you guys very much. I just want to say uh, thank you to everyone who supported the channel, supported me, supporting what we do here. I know it's not always perfect, and I'm kind of a dick every once in a while, but that doesn't mean I don't love you all. Have yourself a great night, everybody, and peace out.